How's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this fake rock background for a little Stimson's python. So for this background build, I'm using this 60 by 60 by 45 Exoterra. And as always, I'm using this insulation foam to make our background. This stuff just comes from Bunnings. So I originally started this build much like my pygmy python build. I started carving long individual pieces that I was going to stack on top of each other at different lengths and intervals so I could make rock work out of that. I started carving it after this, making all sorts of different shapes, using a few new techniques as well, and some of the old ones too, using my hot wire and my soldering iron, all that sort of stuff. But eventually, I decided I didn't like the look that much, and I totally scrapped it. I really just want to show that things don't always go perfect the first time. It's okay to start again, try something new if you don't like it. So I decided to try something different. I got a reference photo, a few different kinds of rock formations, and I started drawing right onto the foam, those sort of cracks and everything that I wanted to bring out from those reference photos. From there, I just used a Stanley knife to cut it out, and I placed all the individual pieces on top of another foam board and spaced them out slightly where I wanted them. So now I have my basic rock pieces, it's time to give them some detail work. So I got the Stanley knife, and I just started chipping away at the foam, literally just by dragging it in there and then flicking out extra parts, just to give it a rough sort of texture, exactly how I wanted it. So here's a bit of a better look at how this sort of technique works. So it's really great for making a layered sort of, you know, cracking effect on the rocks. And yeah, literally just dragging in that Stanley knife and flicking out the excess that you don't want. You can really create some nice in-depth looking layers with this sort of method. And on top of that, where my hand is, you can actually see I've added another piece of foam on top of my already carved rock layers that I've done underneath. This just gives it some extra depth, some extra 3D effect, and it can really make parts stick out where you want them. to so far I've got some skewers holding up all my rock pieces onto the background but we're not done yet plenty more things to do so next I brought out the soldering iron to carve in even more fine details again just like in my pygmy python build doing all the same sorts of things but what I'm doing now is I'm actually going right between all the cracks of my individual rock pieces to get an even deeper sort of effect there to make it look like it's really coming right out from the back much deeper than it would be otherwise. So here we have all the foam carved and ready to go. The only thing left to do now is to stick down all our individual pieces that aren't properly stuck yet, but I'm gonna leave a few for a bit later. cover our phone again I'm going to be using tile pointing now for this first layer I've watered it down quite a bit and I've actually mixed in a whole bunch of black paint as well now what the black paint is going to do is it's going to cover the entirety of the foam it's going to get down into the cracks and it's going to give it a lot of depth and it's going to help too later on if I miss anything with any paint or any other layers of tile pointing because that black background is going to look really good so at the moment we've just got that first layer of black on and uh, these are not actually stuck on yet. So what I've done is I've done all the insides of these, so they're all done, I don't have to worry about them later. And then I've also done underneath here where little parts that'll stick through when these are on top. So I don't have to worry about trying to fit it all in there once these are all together, so we get that nice, deep, cracked look when these are all down. 
and I don't have to worry about it. So now that that's all done, I'm gonna just silicon those on to the backboard and then we can start hitting it all with some more colors. So next, I've actually decided to hit it with some sandstone color. So I've mixed in some colored oxide powders in with my tile pointing. And I'm also watering down this layer as well. Most of my layers do have a bit of water in them. So they're kind of the consistency of a pancake batter, something like that. And I find it a lot easier to spread around and get detail into it. I like to tap it on when I put the pointing onto the rock. That avoids any brush strokes or anything like that and makes it a lot more of a natural texture. This is the point in the build where it all comes together. It looks like just a pile of fake nonsense before you start painting. So first thing I'm doing here is adding some red colors and some oranges. And this is what's great about the sandstone background. And you can add these different textures on top and it really lets you create what you want from that base color. So I'm starting with multiple shades of red in order to get that background color that's really associated with the Australian desert. So this is going on quite dry as well. There's a lot of dry brushing here and then I'll have a few spots that are a bit more wet and a bit more paint on the brush just to accentuate some different parts of the rock further. Now it should go without saying too that I'm not painting every single part of the background. I'm only highlighting certain parts of the rock and some of it you'll be able to just see the sandstone even right till the end. You just want to highlight certain areas, you don't want to cover every single part. You want different textures all over the thing, not just one uniform colour. So after the multiple patches of different reds, we're now going for more of a brighter orange colour on top to help sort of blend the two in-betweens together. And then to finish it all off, I hit it with a very dark brown and I only very, very lightly dry brushed it just for some extra texturing and aging as well as some shading. It really ties the whole thing together. All right, so now we have our background complete, all painted, all ready to go. So let's box all this up and take it to its new home so we can set up the enclosure. So I hope you guys learned a thing or two about making backgrounds from this video. Here's the complete setup. Make sure you watch my next video to see how we set it up. Otherwise, subscribe for more videos like this and we'll see you next time.